Well, what we're hearing here in Bamako is there's going to be a chief of military commanders meeting of ECOWAS here on Tuesday. And the key really for the military commanders and the heads of state of these countries, which include Nigeria uh, and also Senegal and Burkina Faso, um, is that they get the go ahead from the UN Security Council. Uh, we've spoken to one of the commanders on, uh, of uh, ECOWAS, the Nigerian military general, and he's told us that the problem for them is logistics. If he sends his troops here, who uh, is going to look after them? Who's going to pay for them? Where are they going to sleep? Once those logistical issues are sorted out, then we should be seeing ECOWAS here on the ground, possibly within a week. And of course, uh, finally, the, the, the biggest question of all, just how is this fighting impacting the people there? Well, here in Bamako, I can tell you things are very calm uh, and people are very pleased about the French deployment on the whole. We've seen cars with the French flag draped over them, people shouting out things like, thank you, France, thank you, Francois Hollande, for sending your troops here. But let's just listen to uh, a couple of residents and hear what they had to say. If we had relied solely on our army and the situation continued, Bamako would have been in the hands of these people. The contribution of the French army was a relief for all people from Timbuktu, given the risks that our brothers and sisters were facing in the area. I am in constant contact with my parents in Timbuktu. Today I have a lot of hope and the French army is welcome because alone we cannot deal with bandits, international terrorists. Well, clearly things are calm here, uh, but north of here, uh, things are, are pretty dire uh, for in, in terms of the humanitarian situation. Doctors Without Borders is extremely concerned about uh, people fleeing the fighting, particularly across into Mauritania. Uh, they're worried about getting them help uh, during the fact that, the, the, that there's conflict there as well. Uh, and a lot of people are fleeing by foot because they can't find vehicles to enable them to get away from the bombardment and the fighting that's happening in the north. OK, that's the view there from Mali. Nazneen Mashiri there in Bamako. Let's go over now to Paris. There we can join Jackie Rowland for the latest from there. Jackie, we're hearing that France has called for a United Nations meeting later on Monday. What are they hoping to get out of that? For France, the whole question of international legitimacy is very important. Um, we must bear in mind that uh, one of uh, François Hollande's campaign uh, promises was really to disentangle France from messy international engagements. For example, the withdrawal of all remaining French combat forces from Afghanistan. Now, this new action in Mali would appear to go against that kind of policy. Now, so far, in international terms, there doesn't appear to have been too much controversy about what France is doing. There haven't really been any dissenting voices at the UN, and it's generally been um, viewed or analyzed that the French action falls under Article 5 of Chapter 7 of the United Nations, which basically provides for one member state to call on another member state for help, which would appear to be what exactly is happening here. Mali, the government in Bamako, asking the French to come to their assistance. Um, the United States has said, quite simply, Mali called for France for help. As you just mentioned, um, the United Kingdom is now providing transport planes to help the French military effort. But nevertheless, I think France is still very mindful to be seen to have a broad body of international opinion behind it. And what about within France itself? What's, what's the public's reaction to Hollande's decision to get involved? Well, it really has, within a matter of a couple of, of days, really, transformed the image of François Hollande to someone who was seen as rather bumbling and indecisive and um, who had really, his, the beginning of his presidency had been overshadowed by the Eurozone crisis, the fact that a number of election promises he made, like introducing this new high rate of tax, had in fact got caught up in all sorts of difficulties and so election pledges hadn't been seen through. Suddenly, he's adopting this state like demeanor, um, France acting on the world stage, taking responsibility for 
um, tackling a situation which many in the international community felt that someone needed to address, um, but also the gravitas of a statesman, a president who has to talk to the French public explaining what he's doing and also acknowledging casualties, deaths um, in these operations, not just in Mali, but also during a, a not too successful operation in Somalia as well. So suddenly he's seen as international statesman. So that would appear to be giving a boost, at least for now, to his image. The question, of course, is how long will this military engagement last? As Nazneen was saying, there are different phases. If it's just a case of pushing back the rebel advance, that could be in, in the space of weeks. However, if we're looking at completely retaking the north of Mali and reuniting the country, Country, that could take a longer. And then there's even the question of trying to deal with the whole quest question of, of, of Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. France has already had a presence in Mauritania for years. This is not something that can be resolved overnight. And clearly, the longer any engagement draws out, the more French casualties there are. We mustn't forget the French hostages um, also are held by rebels. Um, this is clearly a, a potentially dangerous situation for Hollande if the operation drags on for too long. OK, Jackie, thanks very much for joining us there with The View from Paris. And Naz, thanks very much for joining us from Bamako.